What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV. Today we are taking a look at the brand new 2020 Ford Transit. Not the Transit Connect, but the big Transit. But before we jump into the video and talk everything you need to know about the Transit, I wanna kinda of give you guys some news, some updates on what is going on in the world of Ford Motor Company. Everybody's been asking us, what about the Bronco? What about the Bronco? So I do have some news for you. Uh, unofficially official, the Bronco is going to be debuted on June 7th at the Detroit Auto Show, so stay tuned for that. Now, the good news is there's going to be a smaller Bronco that's going to be a four-door variant, and it's going to be based on the Escape chassis, and we don't know exactly what it's going to be called, but a couple of the names is floating around is the Bronco Sport. People are calling it the Baby Bronco, but it's not a Baby Bronco. Don't call it a Baby Bronco. But a Bronco Sport, um, some people said it might be a Bronco too. Some people call it the Bronco or the Maverick. Uh, but there is going to be a smaller off-road SUV and it's going to be derived from that Bronco, the family of vehicles. Now the big Bronco, which is going to be based on the Ranger chassis, it's going to have a two-door and a four-door variant. And the cool part is it's going to be available in an automatic or a manual transmission and it's going to have a lot of really, really cool features that I absolutely cannot wait to get. So if you guys are wanting a Bronco, you're going to have to get in line behind me. <laughs> Anyways, Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the reason you're even watching this video, and that is the new 2020 Transit. Talking about the sales numbers of the Transit, it's the number one selling commercial vehicle in the world right now. In fact, in the United States in 2019, Ford sold 153,000 of these things. When you talk about the next competitor, which is the Chevrolet and the GMC combined, they sold 100,000 of them. So we sold 53,000 more units of this one particular brand than Chevrolet and GMC combined combined sold. That's pretty interesting and that's one of the reasons Ford is investing so much money in the refresh of this particular vehicle. Now what I want to talk about is what do you have available as far as the vehicle itself is concerned. So you have a low roof, a medium roof, and a high roof. And then you have, you have a, a short wheelbase, you have a long wheelbase, and then you have the extended length long wheelbase. So that's very important to know that you have three different heights and three different lengths. Let's talk about the low roof first because that's one of the things that's really important to me is the ability that if you need to fit in like a parking deck or you need to fit your vehicle in a normal garage, the cool part about this particular vehicle if in the low roof, low roof version, you can actually fit that vehicle in a normal seven foot garage, which is really, really important. None of the other competitors, the Mercedes Sprinters, uh, the GMC Express, or, or all those other vehicles, this is the only one, the lowest roof, can fit in a normal seven foot garage. So that's very, very important. Now let's talk about, since we're talking about heights of the vehicle, now for the 2020, they now have an available all wheel drive system. And I'm gonna talk about the ease of that use system here in just a second. But one thing you need to note, it is a low profile all wheel drive system. So meaning that if you're just driving on the street and all of a sudden the road conditions get crazy, it can automatically send 100% of the torque all the way up to the front tire tires if need be. So that's very, very important to know uh, right off the bat. In addition to that, you also have, because it's that low profile version, is that an all wheel drive system is the same height as the, for, uh, as the, as the rear wheel drive version. So for instance, when you have the Mercedes Sprinter, if you want that all wheel drive or the, the four wheel drive set up, it automatically raises the ride height of the vehicle by four inches. That doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're getting in and out of your truck all day long, like if you're Amazon or if you're FedEx and you're hopping in and out of that truck all day long, that four inches in height is going to make a very, very big difference when it comes to all day use in a commercial vehicle. So something very, very important that you need to know. The front end is going to be the primary difference that you're going to notice on the outside of the vehicle. You'll notice that it's got a different shape front grill. As you can see right there on the screen, you can compare that to the 19 versus the 20 model. You can see where that difference is. It's pretty funny. The Ford marketing team said it looks like it has a friendlier smile. Well, that just sounds like somebody in marketing would come up with that. But nonetheless, that's going to be the biggest difference as far is the exterior, the appearance of the vehicle. Most of what you're getting updated on this is gonna be technology-wise. So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood so you can kind of see what's going on as far as the engines. And there's some really interesting stuff going on. So this particular vehicle happens to have a 3.5 liter V6. Now the cool part about this 3.5 V6 is that it has actually passed its emissions testing without the need for auto start stop. So that's a pretty cool setup right there. Now the nice part is, is this particular vehicle 
vehicle, the, the engine rather, is derived from the 3.3 liter V6 that is found out of the F-150. Now it has got a lot of really nice technology like uh, port and direct fuel injection and it allows it to get 275 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque and as I've already mentioned to you it does not on this particular engine, not all engines, but this particular engine does not have auto start stop so I can hear you guys rejoicing right now for that. Now there's also going to be an Eco Blue diesel that's going to be available and it's going to be a 2.0 liter four-cylinder diesel uh, that's going to have twin turbos. So it's going to be the first time ever that we've actually had twin turbos on a four-cylinder or an inline four engine. So very, very cool stuff from the Ford side of things. Now let's talk about the actual gas tank next. So the uh, for the first time ever in the Transit, you now have the available extended range fuel tank basically a bigger fuel tank that gets you capacity up to 31 gallons on this particular setup so it's nice that ford has given you the customization that you possibly are going to need so that way you ba basically it's got something for everybody and no matter what you're going to be using the vehicle for this particular vehicle is called the van crew and what that means is there is actually two rows of seats we're going to cover that in a minute so please don't go anywhere but what i want to talk about is the passenger sliding door so as you can see this has got the physical sliding door where you actually have to open it with yourself. Now there is also the availability, and now it's going to be available as a late version of the 2020 model, but you actually have the ability to go with a power sliding door, which is really, really cool because that, I mean, it's just, it's nice that you've got that. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's any other make or manufacturer that's making a power sliding door on a commercial style of a vehicle. Uh, let's move on up here to the headlights for a second. One of the things that I love about this is that it's got a Bizeon HID headlight. And the cool part is, is it's kind of an adaptive headlight. So if you're at a stop sign or a stoplight and you start to turn that wheel, the actual headlight will turn to mimic which direction you're going. So that way you make sure that you've got the light where you need it. And you'd be shocked at what kind of turning radius this thing actually has. And so that's kind of a nice feature that since it's got a nice tight turning radius, the, the light is also going to follow you in the direction that you're going. So pretty cool stuff there. Now, one of the last things I want to talk about on the exterior of the vehicle is how do you put gas in it? Because this is a commercial use vehicle. Um, it's one of the best features or designs that this is actually carryover from the last generation, but it's something that most people need to know that let, let's say that this is a church van or whatever, and it stays in the parking lot six out of the seven days of the week. Well, you don't want someone accessing your gas tank and you've been able to siphon fuel out or put sugar in your tank. And so the gas, to, gas door is actually here. And the cool part is you actually have to open the door to get the actual gas cap. Oh, there is no gas cap, but to actually get the gas door open. And then you can still shut it from there and you can fill it up. But it is truly a safety feature that you have to open the door just to access the fuel. I think it's a very smart engineering on Ford's side I personally would have never thought about. Coming on the inside of the vehicle, you'll see that it is going to be very similar, but yet also a little bit different as far as the interior is concerned. You'll notice that you've got the available uh, vinyl seats. You've also got the available for cloth seats. But in addition to that, you can even do leather seats as well. And those leather seats, I believe, are only going to come in black. Now, this is actually one of our trainer's vehicles. And you can see he's actually got this extra pillow uh, for extra lumbar support. That brings up a noteworthy conversation that this is not just a praising of the vehicle, but this particular vehicle does not have lumbar support in the actual seats. And so that's something that I would have really liked to have seen, but it is something that you need to know anyways. Now, I want to talk about a couple different things. I'm going to crank the vehicle up so I can turn the steering wheel straight and kind of show you a couple different features. Uh, but this particular vehicle has got a different looking steering wheel. So you'll notice that the steering wheel looks more like a steering wheel from a Ford Escape than it does from the previous version of the Transit. So it's very, very important to note. Now you'll also notice that you've got the cruise control set right here. And this one is set up with the adaptive cruise control, which is very, very important. Now you need to know that this adaptive cruise control does not feature stop and go. And one of the reasons for that is because it has a physical e-brake. And so as you back the camera up, you'll see that this e-brake right here, this means that you automatically cannot have the stop and go with the uh, adaptive cruise control. Control. So if you look at the uh, F-150s and you look at all these other vehicles that have the stop and go feature, it has got an electronic parking brake and that's what holds it while you're at a stoplight or whatever for the stop and go feature. Now while we're down here looking at this, I do want to show you, you also have a power inverter located right here so that way you've got easy access to a 110 volt outlet right there off the get-go. Now you'll notice that this door is a little bit loose. Forgive that because it is a pre-production prototype 
vehicle. In fact, this is the 108th Ford Transit that they ever made for this 2020. So this is actually never going to end up seeing a customer. Um, they'll probably put it into some research and development, some long-term testing and some stuff like that, but it is something you need to note nonetheless. Now the next thing that's different on the 2020 is going to be this dashboard. You'll see that it's got a lot of different extra pockets down here so you can put your crap there. Um, it's kind of funny how, time, how many times you see these commercial work vans that people will take their old Taco Bell and <laughs> throw it up at the front. They'll take it uh, and put, you know, their maps or their invoices this is a great extra piece of storage for you right here and one of the ways that they did that is that the old gps screen was kind of slanted forward and it basically reduced the amount of space you could have up here what they did is they brought the dashboard forward and then they also put this uh, sync 3 touchscreen which is an available option but the nice part about that is it also comes with apple carplay and android auto in addition to that you also have the ability to go with a wi-fi hotspot so if you're working out of the vehicle you've got that taken care of as well. A couple of other really nice features that you need to know about, I'm going to turn the volume down just to make sure it's not blaring, but you've got these, I'm going to drop it and drive so you can see it, but you've got the uh, active park assist where this vehicle will parallel park itself and perpendicular park itself. So that is a very, very cool feature right there off the bat. Now the other thing that you need to know, and I'm going to turn this thing off because it is uh, dinging me to death, but you've also got a couple of different drive modes as well, and then you also have your, have your traction control icon right here. Now I've already talked about the Sync 3 system with Apple CarPlay, so I'm going to uh, focus our attention down here to these upfitter switches. Now as you know, the Raptors and some of the Super Duties have this, but I think that is a really smart idea to have those upfitter switches, especially in a commercial vehicle where if you need to wire some extra lights or if you need to put a winch in or whatever the situation is, you have got that taken care of right there. Now what I want to do is I'm going to hop back out, but I want to talk about how many cup holders you have in this particular vehicle. You notice you have a cup holder here, a cup holder here, and what looks like it's a, another cup holder here, or maybe that's like a Red Bull cup holder. I'm not exactly sure, but you've got that option. You've also got another cup holder right here, which is massive and it's kind of leaned forward and I'd be a little sketchy. To, to put one right there, but you do have that in addition to cup holders right here in the door as well. Now, once again, the reason this vehicle is a little bit lived in is because this is our trainer that travels from you know dealership to dealership to tell us and teach us about this vehicle. I like it because it kind of gives you a real world um, application of what it would look like if you actually used one of these for work. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and hop in the back seat of the vehicle so we can kind of show you what's going on there. So I might have jumped the gun just a little bit. There's two important features that I forgot to mention that I want to talk about before before we move to that back seat. The first thing is going to be a feature that can actually save your career, your job or whatever. So most of these vehicles, most of these employers, they put some kind of a technology in place, which Ford has got one available as well, but it's got some technology that can track how fast you go, where the vehicle goes. So that way, if you are paying for the vehicle as an employer, you can see where your employee is and how fast they're going. This vehicle has a LIM button. And what that does is it gives the employee an ability to limit the speed of the vehicle. So let's say that sometimes you get on the interstate and you don't realize how fast you're going. You can limit the speed of the vehicle to 80 miles an hour or whatever you set it to. So that way you don't accidentally creep above that speed limit. Um, so I think that's a pretty cool feature. Now, if you need to get past that for like a safety concern, if you put your foot all the way to the floor, it knows you're trying to override it for like a you know, safety thing. If you're trying to bypass or get around somebody, you put your foot to the floor and it will bypass that feature. But if you're just cruising, it will limit you to that speed. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be the camera setup. So as I come in here, you'll notice there's a button located right here on the dashboard. If you tap it once for the first time available, you have a front camera. And the cool part about that is you hit the button right here. It has a 180 degree camera. So if you're pulling out of some concrete parking lot or concrete parking deck, you can actually see around that concrete pillar, even if you can't see where you are with the driver. So it's really cool that it's 180 degree view. Now, if you tap the button again, it will actually bring you Oh, I guess I got to put it in reverse to do that. But you put it in reverse. And as you can see right here, you've got the same 180 degree view with that rear camera as well. So a very, very nice feature nonetheless. And you can even zoom in if you need to, if you're trying to back the your truck up or the van up to a particular trailer. So a very, very cool feature that you need to know about. Okay, so now for real, let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat. All right, so now we are in the back seat of the very first version of the Ford Transit crew van. And what that crew van means is in the past, the van meant it had two seats in the front and then you had nothing but cargo in the back. Well, 
A lot of times companies need to carry more than two people to a job site. Now Ford is giving you the ability to carry up to five people and you still have plenty of room for cargo or work supplies or whatever you need to throw in the back. And we're gonna show that to you here in just a second. But it is really nice. And as you can see, that seat in the front is all the way back. I'm six foot three and you can see I've still got plenty of room back here. A very, very nice setup, a very, very nice feature that you can see. Now the cool part that you need to know, this one is a crew van, so it doesn't have this feature, but if you get a transit cutaway uh, for like an RV or something, or if you get the transit cargo van where there is no second row seat, these two front seats will actually rotate all the way around so that way you can access all of your gear and all of your equipment without having to stumble over what's going on up here. And you also don't have to get out of the vehicle to get that stuff out of the back seat. So it's a very, very nice feature that is enhanced for 2020 models as well. Now, I keep in mind that these back seats, uh, you do have all of your seat belts and they're all uh, you know chest straps as well. So they're not just a lap belt. Uh, but this seat is stationary. It's not going to recline. It's not going to move. And the reason for that is because a lot of these people are going to put a bulkhead behind us. And as you probably know, the bulkhead is that basically that big divider. So if you want to secure your cargo back here, you can definitely do that. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is what's above me. Now, you'll notice because it's a cargo van or a, a crew van, rather, you'll notice that everything that's above me has actually got a headliner to it, but everything in the back does not. And the reason for that is because this vehicle does feature the side curtain airbags even for that second row so you've got an extra safety feature even for the people in the back seat so that's something that you need to know now if you're looking at just the the actual van with the two front seats the the airbags are only going to be in the front so once again that's just something that you need to know all right now let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the vehicle if this is your first time seeing the transit you might look at the side of the vehicle and wonder like what in the world is this well it's really a nice little feature now we're parked on a downhill incline, but if the vehicle was flat or if there's some crazy wind going on, when you go to open this door, you'll notice that it automatically stops right here. And that's kind of a safety feature. And so does the other side. The other side stops right here. So that way it doesn't swing out and hit the car next to you. But if you want to go further than that, there's an unlock button right here. You pull it back towards you just a little bit, hit the unlock button, and guess what? It swings all the way open. And the reason that those little things were there earlier, that's actually a magnet and it holds the door open. So that way the wind doesn't catch it and flop it around in the rain or in the wind or whatever you want to call it. So that's a very nice feature that once again, it's a carryover from the previous version of the Transit, but it is something that you need to know nonetheless. Now you'll notice that our trainer, he's got all of his stuff back here and I actually asked him to put it all back here because it kind of shows you how much cargo space that you have even though um, it, you've got room for five people in the front. Now, the cool part is, is because the front part is actually going to, the floor is gonna be lined with vinyl. This one has the exposed uh, uh, painted metal to match the exterior of the vehicle. But keep in mind, you do have the ability to go up with a interior protection package, which can actually give you vinyl all the way through or whatever you want. There's a lot of different variations there. Now, speaking of a lot of different variations, we talked about three heights and three lengths. If you remember that, we talked about that in the beginning of the video. You need to know that there are, I think, 78 different body codes on this particular vehicle. I'm going to reference my phone because I can't remember. There's, it's a ton of them. Uh, but you can actually go to a specific website if you don't know what kind of body code you need. You can actually go to the website. It's transitbodydecoder.com. And yes, it's 78 body codes, whereas last year was only 63 body codes. And what I mean by body code is what's the length, what's the height, what kind of configuration are you getting with the seats, that kind of thing. In fact, the, the seating configuration is insane. In fact, Josh was just sharing with me a little bit earlier, I think there was 27 different versions, uh, different seating arrangements in the vehicle. So there's a lot you need to know before you actually just walk in and purchase one of these off the dealer lots. And if you want some more help with uh, how you can order one of those, you can reach us. Our website is alabamaford.com or you can call us. The phone number is right there on the screen, 205 Four nine one zero 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 zero. But nonetheless, let's kind of get back into the actual vehicle itself. Now, there's another feature that you'll see right here. There's actually a handle to help you get into the back of the vehicle. Um, now, keep in mind that those handles are actually optional. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I am six foot three, and he's got some cargo back here. But I wanted to just kind of show you that I am six foot three, and I can almost stand up completely. And this is the medium roof. This is not even the high roof. And so, if you need some 
crazy amount of uh, height in the vehicle, it's definitely available to you. Now, a couple of other things that you need to consider when you're ordering your next vehicle are going to be these LED lights that we'll just put right there on the screen. It is a game changer when you're trying to work out of your vehicle at night and it illuminates the entire cargo area and it is extremely inexpensive and it's an option you definitely need to consider. This vehicle is absolutely loaded with some standard features. So a couple of other things you need to know, this particular vehicle comes standard with lane keeping assist where the vehicle will actually drive you back into the lane if your driver starts to doze off. It also has pre-collision assist where it can actually apply the brakes to hopefully lessen the severity or maybe even completely avoid an accident all together. So very, very cool features there. Now, keep in mind that all of that stuff is going to be considered absolutely standard on all of them. And in addition to that, you have to look at the price point. So we've mentioned the Chevrolet Express vans a couple of times, but I think more or less this vehicle is a direct competitor with the Mercedes Sprinter van. And in most situations, I think this one uh, priced as equipped is going to be roughly $53,000. When you compare a comparable unit to it, you're going to be looking uh, on this Mercedes side a $63,000 price tag. So it's very important to realize, hey, what am I spending for what am I getting? So it's very, very important. And in addition to that, you've also got some really good payload and torque, uh, payload and towing numbers rather. And uh, what I like about that is this particular vehicle, depending on how you have it built out, it can have a payload of up to 4,500 pounds and it can even tow up to 6,900 pounds. So very, very important stuff that you need to know about before you make your next decision. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is the actual uses of the vehicle. Now, Ford is estimating that about 80% of these vehicles are going to be built for commercial use and about 20% are going to be built for families. Now, I've already mentioned to you the 20%. You've got uh, all the way up to a 15 passenger van from the Ford factory and you've got 27 different configurations for seating. So it's kind of crazy all the different seating configurations. But in addition to that, you also have the ability to use it for overlanding or uh, you know some people call it professional outdoorsman. <laughs> you have the ability to do some wild, wild things with this vehicle, and that's what Ford is going for. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you stay subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos, and uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out in that YouTube algorithm. It, it really would help us out if this video has helped you in any kind of your decision making. And once again, if you have any questions about ordering a Transit, we'll be happy to order it and ship it to you. Feel free to reach us. The phone number is right there on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great day.